Well, hello again. Uh, a week ago, we came online to say hello, a little fireside chat. Again, I'm by a cold church, cold because we don't have the heat on and, and cold because you're not here. And uh, I have to say this Sunday morning, the past Sunday morning, is one of the most strange Sunday mornings I've ever had. The, the church bells rang, but uh, nobody came, right? Because you're not supposed to. It's the way we're uh, trying to protect ourselves and help save lives to keep the distance. But I, I missed you a lot. And um, so here we are again, another week. I just wanted to check in, tell you about a few things. Um, I... Uh, I uh, heard that a lot of people did catch our Mass, which we recorded live streaming on Saturday, and that was a positive experience for people. Uh, yearning, of course, to be together in the pews, but uh, we thank everybody who put that together. Don Byrne, our sound technician, and our, our musicians who came, and um, you know, we, we put something together that I think a lot of people enjoyed. So we'll do that again, God willing, this uh, Saturday, and I'll be available all week as well. Um, we also started a, a phone ministry. We thought, you know, like General Motors is repurposing their plant maybe to make ventilators. We're repurposing our staff because they don't have as much uh, to do because religious ed is out and, uh, you know, the choirs aren't practicing. And so we're uh, trying to call people just to check in with folks. And it's, it's going well. It's enjoyable to get in touch with you. I hope if you're a part of St. James that you'll get a call sometime. Just a, a warning, if you get a call from a 612 area code, that's probably Beth, because she's calling from her cell phone. And she said, we're telling all these happy stories about connecting with people. And Beth said, well, you know, a lot of people are hanging up on me. <laughs> and I said, well, I think it's just because they see the numbers from 612 and who'd be calling. So I think they think she's a scammer or a telemarketer. But if someone from that number calls, uh, it's just Beth, and she's a good gal. So uh, talked to someone today, talked to Chuck, and he said that... Um, you know, every day you wake up with a pulse, it's a good day. You know, so he's keeping a, a positive attitude about things. And he said it's been so wonderful the way he's been able to call other people on the phone and the way that, that other people have called him on the phone. It's a different way of connecting. I read an article uh, just this afternoon. It said, you know, social distancing is maybe kind of not the best phrase to use. We should maybe say physical distancing because we don't want to be socially distant. We want to connect with one another, but in, in non-physical ways, right? So the, the phone is certainly one way to do that. I have not talked to my mother as often as I have in the last couple weeks uh, because I'm calling her so often. I won't be able to see her. If I went, I'd be one of those knock on the window and wave uh, at her senior living complex in Wausau. Uh, so I'm, we're content just to have this phone relationship uh, for a while. And just as uh, we shouldn't be socially distancing, of course, it goes without saying, we shouldn't be spiritually distancing either, right? Um, so we're not here, we're not in physical communion on, on a Sunday morning or a Saturday afternoon. Uh, but I hope we carry each other in our hearts, and I hope that we're finding other ways to experience communion, to experience the love of God. Uh, Kelly's posting things on, uh, I think people are getting uh, emails about different faith enrichment things you might be able to do. I might start putting some things on Facebook, some different uh, methods of, of how to pray, how to encounter scriptures, or how to, uh, sometimes people wonder, just what do I do? I know I'm supposed to pray more, but you know, what, what exactly do I do? Um, so maybe we'll get some tips that way to really be able to use the, the time well. Um, it's not a time that we ask for, but it's the time that we have. And so we should try to use it well, right? I, um, as you know, I was on sabbatical this past fall in the Jerusalem area. And Friday afternoon, things would go from busy, busy, busy to like nothing going on because it was the beginning of the Sabbath. People did all their, the market would be buzzing at noon on Friday, but by three o'clock it was empty because people had to be home and they couldn't do any work. And I asked one of our Jewish tour guides, I said, uh, so what's Sabbath like for you? And he said, what's Sabbath like? It's my favorite day of the week. It's the only time I get to spend with my kids. We play games, we talk about this, we might watch a show. We don't, I don't think they watch shows. Uh, but they spend people time together. He said, I look forward to it every week. And in some ways, this is what we're, we have. Uh, we have an extended Sabbath. You know, our lives have, have changed. We are in homes together. And I hope, I hope we can embrace that. You know? 
Uh, how are families going to use this, this time together? I know it could be challenging too. There's, you know, what's the best thing about being in a family is that you, you're, you have each other, right? You know, what's the worst thing about being in a family? You, you know, you have each other. You're always, you're always around and it can be kind of tense. I've heard enough confessions now, brothers and sisters don't always get along so well. So, uh, but these are special times. And so I, you know, I pray for you that you'll be able to get along, to be able to use the time well. Um, you might consider, I hope you do, to pray together. Uh, the world obviously needs a lot of prayer now. I think families need a lot of prayer just for yourselves. You may pray for, uh, you know, the virus and its effects, that it be minimal. Pray for those who've died, that they be with God, for life, ever, life everlasting, you know, and uh, those who are left behind who grieve. Lots to pray for there. Uh, and also for the family that we my family might get along you know well we might love each other well in these times the rosary is a great group prayer uh, maybe you know it maybe you could just look it up online and and kind of teach it to one another you know if you are a family or you're a, a couple and you uh, share a prayer every night during this these times of uh, physical distancing you, you remember it for the rest of your life. Your children will remember it for the rest of their lives. Um, you might want to just think, how do I want to remember these days? These days will pass. You know, and when we look back, what will, they, what will we remember about them? Will we remember just that it was scary, that we're afraid, that we you know, uh, didn't have enough, we were worried about not having enough? Or will we remember that we cared for one another? that we prayed extra hard, you know, that we, we showed up for one another, we made some calls, we gave and received love, you know. There's that great parable at the end of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount where he said the, the wise man will be like the one who built his house on rock. The storms came and the wind blew and buffeted the house, but it did not collapse because it had been built on, on rock. So the foolish man is like the one who built his house on sand. The winds came, the storms blew, and, and knocked the house over. It had no strong foundation. You know? It's a great parable for our time. You, know, you want to have that, that strong foundation of leaning on what is eternal, what is strong, what is forever. God and his life that he gives for us. He wants to be with us, you know. And... Uh, we find ways to lean on, on his strength to bring us courage in these times. Um, I think in closing, um, Pope Francis uh, asked everybody today to say the Lord's Prayer. And it's a beautiful prayer. He said we should say the prayer as, as children who are confident in the Father's love. He asked us all, and he's in a very difficult place. He's in Italy, right? I think one of his household was diagnosed with the, uh, the virus today. And so we want to keep the Holy Father in our prayers. We need him and his leadership. Um, and he asked us to pray the Lord's Prayer today in this Feast of the Annunciation. And during Lent, we've been uh, chanting it. And so I'd like to lead us in the chant. If you want to chant along, you can. Um, I believe he introduced it by saying, so as, as God's people who need one another, who confidently approach him as our loving Father, we pray with one heart and with one soul. So let us pray in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Peace be with you.
Let's not squander this, this time to uh, make God the center of our lives.